Thank you everyone for being here today. I'm uh, honored today to formally unveil the Douglas Mike Day Psychedelic Therapy to Save Lives Act. We're surrounded here by supporters who understand just how important exploring psychedelic therapy is in treating our service members suffering from PTSD and TBIs. Standing next to the podium is a, is a picture of Mike Day. I wanna talk about him for a second. Mike served as a Navy SEAL, um, committing 21 years of his life to fighting for his country. And I can say humbly and objectively that Mike Day was an entirely different breed, even for a Navy SEAL. On one mission in Iraq, Mike got shot 27 times. Most people would have died from much less, but Mike kept fighting, waking up after going unconscious from his wounds and then killing the terrorists that were surrounding him. Against all odds, he made it home. Now, when you think of a hero, you think of a guy like Mike Day. Yet, like so many other warriors, after Mike made it back home, he began an entirely different, more insidious battle, a battle with the demons that followed him home after war. Ultimately, those invisible wounds proved too great and Mike Day killed himself earlier this year. Mike's personal struggle wasn't an isolated case. More than 20 veterans kill themselves every day. And 27% of post 9-11 veterans are diagnosed with PTSD. And the truth is we have not made much progress in treating it. We have to think outside the box. We have to do something new. So that's why I'm once again calling on Congress to use this year's NDAA to direct the Secretary of Defense to provide grants for further research into the use of psychedelics to treat PTSD and TBI in our active duty service members. It's worth noting that we've all voted for this already. We've passed this out of the House last Congress and it went where all good things go to die, which is the U.S. Senate. So why am I pushing so hard for this? Why do I do it year after year? Because it works. Because as Mike's widow, Brenda, would attest to, it could have saved Mike's life. Recent private sector research into the use of MDMA to treat PTSD found that 88% of trial participants had a significant reduction in symptoms and 67% no longer had PTSD. And that study is not an outlier. The first use of MDMA assisted psychotherapy for PTSD in 2010 found that 83% of the patients given MDMA no longer met the criteria for PTSD. Follow-up results reveal that the positive effects persisted for years. Perhaps more compelling than the data, though, are these personal testimonies that you'll hear from the people standing behind me and the countless others who say this treatment turned them away from suicide, it saved their marriage, it rescued their families, and pulled them out of the depths of despair that so many service members living with PTSD suffer from. But under current law, active duty service members suffering from PTSD must surreptitiously travel abroad to receive this treatment. Now, this creates some problems. First, they could have their active duty status revoked, which means they're taken away from their community and their friendships that are integral to their lives and their support networks. Second, this prevents them from gaining the research, prevents us from gaining the research we need to determine the true efficacy of psychedelic therapy. We're never going to understand the extent to which psychedelics can help our service members until we start actually doing the necessary clinical trials in a controlled environment. Now, to be clear, this, this bill doesn't grant every single service member the ability to go out and get psychedelics on their own. It would not provide over-the-counter psychedelics to military pharmacies. It would not even indicate that psychedelics are effective and people with PTSD should seek them out as a treatment option. All this does is direct the Department of Defense to begin the research and allow service members to keep their status if they participate in those trials. It is a simple but very positive step in the right direction and I hope the House Armed Services Committee will include this policy in this year's NDAA. We need to study this innovative therapy and give our service members a chance to continue that service when they are treated. They deserve that option and we should not stand in their way. I'd now like to introduce Marcus and Amber Capone, the founders of Veterans Exploring Treatment Solutions, to share their personal testimony about how psychedelics save their family. They, they have been amazing advocates for this, and uh, I'll introduce them now. Marcus and Amber, please. Thank you. Representative Crenshaw, thank you. I'm Marcus Capone. I spent 13 years, uh, completed many combat tours as a U.S. Navy SEAL, deploying to both uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. It was a great honor to serve this nation. There's nothing I would change about my time in service. What does need to change, however, is access to therapies which show incredible promise in combating 
many of the challenges that our active duty and veteran populations are facing today. For myself, many of my former teammates, uh, and countless veterans in the VETS program, there's been nothing more effective than psychedelic-assisted therapies. Despite the clear promise of psychedelic therapies in the 50s and 60s, these compounds were banned with the introduction of the Controlled Substances Act of 1970, halting research for over half a century. As new data emerges, it's clear that veterans and service members could be a population which benefits most from access to these life-saving treatments. Veterans will also lead the next generations of life-saving treatments to the broader population those struggling with mental health issues. Yet more research is desperately needed. Um, I can say that following the attacks of 9-11, a generation of American war fighters proudly stood up to answer the call. We deployed forward time and time again for some an unprecedented 20 years of sustained combat. I have friends that are on their 20th deployment to combat zones as we speak. Those who made it home have visible and invisible injuries, and we could do far better in supporting the latter. The veteran suicide statistic of 20 or more per day is indicative of the fact that current interventions are not working. It's time for a new approach. This legislation honors, remembers, and named after Navy SEAL Mike Day, who was a legend in the SEAL teams and was one of my SEAL instructors. Mike, uh, as Representative Crenshaw already mentioned, uh, survived 27 rounds of enemy fire, yet died by his own hand. Mike deserved better from this nation. A tidal wave of post-9-11 service members and veteran health care needs is rapidly approaching, and we desperately need to get ahead of it. I applaud my former SEAL teammate, Representative Crenshaw, and all congressional members in support of this bill, which is a critical step in ending the suicide epidemic plaguing our active duty and veteran populations. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amber Capone. I am the wife of Marcus, and by the grace of God, we stand here together today. We are the founders of a nonprofit, VETS, which is an acronym for Veterans Exploring Treatment Solutions. It was my great honor to support Marcus through multiple combats, combat deployments in the global war on terror. We are some of the lucky ones to have survived the wars, despite our marriage and family hanging on by a thread in the period of time following Marcus's service. What no one prepared us for, however, is the new war that we would be facing, the same war that so many military and veteran families are waging right now as we speak, the battle for access to meaningful health care and the unrelenting fight against suicide. There was no one fighting alongside us in this new battle, which is why we were forced to take a leap of faith when Marcos traveled abroad to access a treatment that undoubtedly saved his life, our marriage, and our family a psychedelic assisted therapy. After several years and a multitude of failed healing attempts, the relief provided by just one treatment was utterly remarkable. We were immediately convicted to pay this healing forward. And to date, our organization, VETS, has provided funding for hundreds, almost a thousand veterans to receive this same critical lifeline. The consistent real world evidence we've seen since the founding of VETS is absolutely unprecedented. And recent neuroimaging study we completed with, in collaboration with Stanford University further solidifies the potential impact of psychedelic therapies within the military and veteran communities. Marcus deployed seven times, and like all current and former service members, he would have readily given his life in defense for this nation. It is quite telling, however, that I was more afraid of losing him to suicide on the soil of the United States of America than I ever was when he was deployed to a war zone. We know there is a better way. We've lived it. We've seen hundreds of others who are living it as well. Our veterans and service members deserve access to therapies that work within the borders of the nation that they were willing to die for. We are incredibly proud of the work that VETS is doing, but with a never ending demand, we can no longer stand in this gap alone. We desperately need more research to better understand the therapeutic potential of these therapies, which is why I applaud Representative Crenshaw, the bill co-sponsors, and all members who are in support of this life-saving legislation. And I thank you for joining us on the front lines of this new fight. Thank you. Thank you both, and thank you both for your advocacy and your work. I want to introduce Jonathan Lubecki from the Veterans and Governmental Affairs Liaison for the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. I want to say something really quick about Jonathan and how we met and how this entire thing really came to be. So a few years ago, I was at dinner with an old friend, Marine 
who had been hit um, hit by an IED blast. He was in a vehicle. It concussed his brain so bad he couldn't speak for a long time. He's had, he's had trouble ever since. He went and did this psychedelic therapy. He told me all about it over dinner one night. Uh, he lives in Annapolis. I come home and I get in the elevator. Uh, at the time I was living in the Navy Yard and Jonathan's in the elevator with me. He lives in the same building as I do. And he says, Congressman, I know who you are. I just gotta tell you real quick. He's obviously good at elevator pitches. He just, I gotta tell you real quick, I tried to kill myself four times and this psychedelic therapy saved my life. You need to know about it. So in one night, two people came to me and told me about this. It was, it's why I had to do this, right? And then I found more and more friends who, 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 had, who had done the same journey and told me it saved their lives. And so that's how I met Jonathan and I appreciate Jonathan's advocacy for this issue. Thank you, sir. Uh, Lesson, always practice your elevator pitch. You never know exactly when it's going to come in handy. Uh, as the congressman said, my name is Jonathan Lebecki. I'm retired, medically retired from the United States Army due to PTSD and TBI. Within two months of coming home from Iraq in 2006, I put it after going to a church, after going to Womack Army Medical Center and telling both of them that I was going to end my life and being turned away, I went home, I drank a bottle of vodka, and I put a nine millimeter to my temple and I pulled the trigger. That was the first of actually five suicide attempts that I tried over eight years. Nothing worked. I'll be honest, I actually felt bad for my doctors at the VA. They tried everything. They put me on every pill they, they could find. They put me through every therapy they could find and nothing made me want to live. Nothing gave me any hope of a better day. And then I accidentally found out about psychedelics for mental health because an intern at the VA in Charleston, South Carolina, slid a piece of paper across the desk and said, I'm not supposed to tell you about this. Read this when you leave. And it just said, Google MDMA PTSD. And I found out MAPS was doing a clinical trial in Charleston. I called up, applied. Fortunately, because another veteran had been so successful in his treatment, they dropped out after their first uh, active session, they were able to expand it one person to include me. So I was the 26 person in a 25 person study. That was eight and a half years ago. I haven't had PTSD or suicidal ideology since. I can't tell you the first day I didn't think to kill myself, but I remember the first day I knew I didn't. I, I can't tell you the first night I, I slept and didn't have a nightmare, but I can tell you the first morning I woke up and I remembered not having nightmares. And I'm not the person, kind of person to just sit, sit around and, and, and sit back on my laurels because, you know, I'm a non-commissioned officer and I always will be. When I wore the uniform, my job was to get the mission accomplished and to take care of my guys. Now that I'm a veteran, my mission is my guys. And I know how much this has helped me. I know how many people currently serving on active duty are, are, are suffering and pretending that there's no problem because they don't want to leave their guys. And I think one of the most compelling stories about this bill isn't mine, isn't how much I've healed. It's the fact that I sat and had a days long conversation with a close friend of mine on whether he should reenlist or not. Because he, he's actually a male victim of military sexual trauma, something that isn't talked about much, that has a ton of stigma attached to it. And he has PTSD. And he had to make a decision. Do I reenlist and continue to serve my country that I love? Or do I get out, go do psychedelic therapy, and then try to get back in? It's really hard to get back in. I've tried to do it twice since I've gone through MDMA therapy. But the Department of Defense, you know, was too late for Mike Day. They were too late for my, my friend, Dusty Repass, and many, many others. It's time for them to stop being too late on the promise they made that we leave no one behind. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. And I now want to introduce uh, Donald Franklin from Special Operations Association of America. Donald, thank you for your advocacy on this. Hey, folks, I'll keep this brief as there's been so many great things spoken already here. But you know, the Special Operations Association of America aims to fight for those who fight for us all past, present, and future members of the special operation community, their family members, and their survivors. 
In a 2020 U.S. SOCOM report made available through a FOIA request, it was revealed that rates of suicide within the special operations community are 30 percent higher than the rest of the armed forces. Members of our special operations community are in desperate need for therapies that work. They should not have to go through a death of despair. They should not have to struggle silently with their visible and invisible wounds. TBI, CTE, and PTSD run rampant throughout the community, and they need hope. Douglas Mike Day needed hope. And that's why the Special Operations Community and the Special Operations Association of America wholeheartedly supports the Douglas Mike Day Psychedelic Therapy Save Lives Act. This will be a monumental step forward to getting access to members of the Special Operations Community that are in dire need for therapies that work. And we are happy to support this and this bipartisan coalition moving forward and to get this into law. Thank you. Thank you, Donald. Uh, now I'll introduce my friend uh, Morgan Luttrell, also a former Navy SEAL and fellow Texan. Morning, everyone. <clears throat> I actually knew Mike very well. He's a great friend of mine. And after he exited the military, he became a care coalition provider. So it was his job to advocate for wounded service members coming back from overseas. He was actually my care coalition provider. And Mike, and everything that he had gone through was actually absolutely a legend while he was still active duty. But everybody focused in those physical wounds. How could you walk around with 27 rounds and impacting the body? And I think we missed the mark because nobody really focused in on the invisible injuries, which he actually inevitably uh, succumbed to. In this bill and what we're asking for in this and why we're pushing so hard for it to go through is this is an alternative. This is not the end all be all. We would never say that. This is another tool that you can put in your proverbial toolbox to increase your quality of life and decrease the symptomatic issues that, that are focused in and live underneath that cognitive umbrella for post-traumatic stress and, and, and other variable emotional instabilities. Now, this is a great alternative to opioids. That is not a secret in this country. There's an opioid problem, especially in our veteran space. This is very controlled. This is research-based. As a researcher myself, I'm very comfortable standing up here in front of the American people and advocating. I have a veteran panel behind me. My identical twin brother's off my right shoulder. This is the pathway forward. We have veterans rallying behind this effort because we want to solve the problems that are inflicting our veteran service members. And this transcends veterans. It goes to first responders out to everyday moms, dads, and kids. But all we're asking for is a chance. A chance to save the lives of those that served our country so graciously. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, now I want to introduce uh, my friend, uh, Jack Bergman. Thanks, Dan. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, Dan, thank you for taking the lead. Because if you're going to get anything done in Washington, D.C., or anywhere else for that matter, someone's got to step up and take the lead. And as I look behind me at all the folks who have already spoken here this morning, all leaders, all focused on the mission, all focused on what is the right thing to do in a small way to start with, to, to cure, to begin to cure the challenges of mental health we have in our country as a whole by focusing on starting with those who have sworn an oath to give everything for our country, and that's our veterans. Now I'm going to speak to, as I look into the lenses of the camera here, all my colleagues in the House of Representatives, all 400 and I guess 32 of you because I got two standing behind me here. But the point is, it's time for all of you, Democrat or Republican, members of the House, to step up, support Representative Crenshaw's bill, support the overall effort to study breakthrough therapies in psychedelic assisted therapies. In fact, even though he's not here today, I'd like to give a shout out to my colleague, Representative Lou Carrera from Los Angeles area, who founded with me the PATH Caucus. We founded this a few months ago, and we've kind of added a name here. It's a good path, because we all want to be on a good path in life. And in this case, good path stands for get off opioid dependency psychedelic assisted therapies. 
We've got our work cut out for us. But again, to my colleagues in the House, vote for the bill. For those of you on appropriations, appropriate the money asked for this year to get the research going at the federal level. And number three, authorize it so that we as a Congress can let the medical community do its its thing, what it does best, which is the research in an open way, without bias, without discrimination, and let's begin to help in a positive way, not just talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. And Jack, thank you for chairing the, the Psychedelics Caucus. And you know, as a former general, um, your, your opinion carries a lot of weight, so I appreciate that. And uh, you know, there's a lot of members that are very supportive of this, of this legislation and this effort. Um, you know, not everybody could be here right now. And I could, I could bring a dozen more service members who've gone through the therapy and say it saved their lives. But you know, like I said uh, last time these guys came to visit, I'm tired of veterans having to come up here and, and spill their guts and tell, and tell us about their, about their stories and, 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 their, and their troubles. They shouldn't have to tell us anymore. We should just do something about it. That's what this is about. Uh, so I thank everybody for their support in this. I, I, I think we're going to be successful this year. I would add to, you know, as we, say, as we talk to our colleagues, Jack, we should also talk to the Senate. Senators are really the ones who have to champion this, and we're, we're in continued contact with them on, on that subject. So thank you all for being here, and we'll, we'll, we'll take questions if we have time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, they haven't openly supported it yet, so I don't want to call them out, but like I'm talking to guys like my, well, I guess I will. Um, I'm talking to guys like my, my good friend, Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, folks like that. I think really get this, that get this. I think we'll be successful this time. Yes, yes. I, I've, we've, we've spoken with them as well. There's some initial uh, initial pushback. But I, the, the pushback never comes because somebody's against this. They, they often just don't understand it, where it came from, a simple explanation, and, and they've got it. So that's why this advocacy is so important. Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is co-sponsored by Democrats. I, I, we almost have an equal number. This is, this is very bipartisan, for sure. Yeah, so it authorizes MDMA, Ibogaine, psilocybin, 5-MeO, is that what it, DMT? All the good stuff. All right. Any questions for our vets who have been through it? I mean... Can you describe what it's like for people who've never experienced PTSD, never experienced these, these uh, treatments, what it's like before and how they're treated and then after? What's the best way you can describe it? Well, I, I, I don't have post-traumatic stress disorder. I, I, I spent my entire career giving that to other people. But what the challenges I did face when I exited the military at the operational tempo that we lived by in the teams was something that I couldn't turn the page on in the civilian world. And the struggle was with my wife, my family, my friends, where I had this aggressive nature that I didn't need to have. And make no mistake, my, my journey my experience with this, this treatment was the most horrific experience of my entire life. It was absolutely miserable. This is not something you so do regularly. which one you did. I did, um, the medications I took were Ibogaine and 5-MeO-DMT. And it was, it gives me the hibbity jibbies to even think about doing it ever again, which I never will do. I will never tell anybody to do this, ever. If you find yourself in a place that you were lost and no other modalities have worked, this could possibly be that tool. And I can honestly stand here in front of all of you in the American public and say, this changed, I was reborn. This changed my life. It saved my marriage. It is, it is the, one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. And I've never, I've never done a drug in my entire life. But I had to go overseas to do this. And I, as a researcher, I researched this for years, years. And then I had teammates that came to me, men that I trust with my life, where if they said two plus two is five, we're going with it. And I inevitably took the leap standing right behind me and again if 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 you find yourself where it's it nothing else is working this could be the way and it, it it allows you a reset a clean slate and this is more this is morgan's experience okay it's different for everybody there's no cookie cutter there's no manual here the, this 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 journey that you take is yours and yours only um, but that's how it affected me I can thank you that in one word if you want
balance. My name is Marcus Luttrell. I'm, I'm Congressman Luttrell's uh, younger brother. And uh, I grew up, like I said, he was my hero. I fought him my entire life. We weren't allowed to do drugs in our family. It's all about service. Uh, I came back, and the only reason I wound up down there is because the men who I looked to for guidance suggested that I go down there and do the treatment. Once I did, the best word that I can, the way I can explain what happened to me when I come out of that is complete balance. We all search for that through our entire lives. Everybody behind the cameras, you know what I'm talking about. You got two sides that live inside of you, and we try to balance those out. And that's what happened to me. That's the best way I can explain it. Yeah, that's the most important question. So, so I, I did not do Ibogaine. I have not done Ibogaine or 5-MeO. I went through uh, MDMA, assisted therapy, commonly called ecstasy or molly. For me, I, I ran into several issues. One, regular talk therapy didn't really work for two primary reasons. One, we've all we've all been to a therapist and you always hear, hear these dreaded words, well, that's all the time we have this week, we'll take it up there next week, and we never do. And with the MDMA assisted therapy, it's eight hours of therapy in a row under the influence. But the medication allows you to trust the therapist. I had a therapist that I reported physical abuse to when I was a child who then reported that to my abuser. Being in the military and being told, hey, don't ever tell anybody you have mental problems, made me not trust anybody. And even if I did trust them, even if we did get to something, I would have a panic attack and I, I would either get over emotional and couldn't process or my emotions would completely shut down. The medication puts the, the mind, body and spirit in the place that it needs to be so the actual therapy can work. Because the therapy is what actually fixes you. It's not necessarily the medication. The medication just allows the therapy to work. You know, uh, Representative Crenshaw has had many surgeries. They gave him very powerful drugs in the hospital, I'm assuming, when he had his surgeries. This isn't much different than that. It's a mental injury that, that needs to be repaired. It can be repaired. The patient just needs to be put in the proper space for it to be repaired. And if I hadn't have gone through it, my, my son would have a folded flag and instead he has a father and I think we need more more mothers and fathers and less folded flags. Can you walk us through how the therapy works? Is it just like normal therapy when you go in and you're talking with someone you're just it's very much like like normal therapy. So you've got three you've got a total of twelve ninety minute sessions where you don't do any drugs or anything and then you have three active sessions which last anywhere from six to eight hours utilizing under the influence of MDMA. The 90 minute sessions are exactly like you think they are, regular therapy, talking about things. The first three are more to give the therapist an idea of what's wrong and how to guide you uh, during the active sessions and then all the rest of those 90 minute sessions are integration which is talking to the therapist about all the things you thought about in therapy because you're very contemplative after you think a lot about everything that happened because when your perceptions change you start to reevaluate a lot of different things uh, but they would they started me off with the most kindergarten questions like what was the food like something that everybody is going to be able to have an answer to and I just started talking and then we talked for a while and then they'd have me put on eye shades and and they'd play some music and I'd lay there and I'd think about all the things I just talked about for a while and then they'd start ask, talking to me again and it was a cycle over and over like that talk for a bit you know go look inside yourself for a bit and then talk for a bit I'll, finish up. I'll, I'll answer a question too so as Marcus said uh, balance th this is just a complete reset and so, you know, I don't wish depression upon anyone. Uh, when you can't get out of bed, when you want to isolate, you're sad, you don't want to answer your friends back. Um, what psychedelic therapies do, they, they just, they kind of wake you up. You know, it's a, it's a complete mind reset. You know, one day you don't want to live life, the next day you want to pay it forward to others and, and that's what we wanted to do. And so, you know, as a special operations individual, I had access to any treatment that was available for mental health and I still did not get better for seven years straight. Seven years of antidepressants and mood stabilizers and brain clinics and a week of psychedelic medicine with the proper preparation, the proper clinically guided treatment, 
the proper integration with the therapist, and then the proper ongoing monitoring is exactly how these medicines need to be administered. We need to have access, uh, and we need, be, we need to be able to pay for it. So thank you. Thanks, Marcus. I, I think we've run out of time. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for giving us your attention, and uh, thank you all for, for being here to advocate. That wraps it up. Appreciate it.